Hello everyone and welcome back to Xbox Nation. It's that time again and it's my new favourite episode every single month where we look at the best rated Xbox and Game Pass games from the previous month. September 2024 was an absolute banger. I mean every single game we're talking about today scored over 75 and above on Metacritic so you know we had some top quality releases over this past month. Now if you're thinking about grabbing any of these games in today's list or you just want to pick up some Xbox store credit with a cheeky 5% off head over to to xboxnation.co.uk and use the code xboxnation at checkout. All right, with that out of the way, let's dive into the best rated games of September 2024. Let's kick things off with Castlevania Dominius Collection, which actually scored a fantastic 89 on Metacritic. This collection includes several classics from the Castlevania franchise, all of them beautifully remastered. We're talking crisp visuals, reworked sound, and that iconic scrolling gameplay that put Castlevania on the map. For me, it's like stepping back into to my childhood, but just with way better graphics. If you've never played the old Castlevania games before, then this is the perfect entry point. You get all the great storytelling, gothic atmosphere, and that challenging but rewarding gameplay that the series is known for. The updated controls and modern tweaks do make it more accessible, but it's still got that edge that longtime fans will really love. I've personally put in many hours into this collection already, and it's such a rewarding experience. The boss battles here are just as intense as I remember, and the mix of exploration, combat, and puzzle solving is just still top notch. Honestly, if you love action adventure games with a very dark twist, then the Dominius Collection is a must buy. Next, we've got Star Trucker, which came in with a fairly good 74 on Metacritic. Now, I'll admit, I was a bit curious and also a bit skeptical about the idea of trucking, but in space. This game has such a laid back vibe to it that really caught me off guard, but in the best way possible. You're essentially just cruising through the stars, transporting goods across different planets and systems, but it's more about the journey rather than the destination. To be honest, this was one of the best surprises on Xbox Game Pass so far this year, and I'm still playing it every other day. It's definitely not an action-heavy game by any means, so if you're looking for something more relaxed, then Star Trucker might be right up your alley. There's something just honestly really satisfying here about upgrading your rig, managing your cargo, and just soaking in that spacey atmosphere. Sure, there are quite a few technical issues here and there, but it's an indie title, and what they've managed to pull off with the scale and world building is pretty impressive. I did find myself actually getting lost in this one for hours. The environments are stunning and sometimes it's nice just to slow down, kick back and enjoy the view while hauling some space cargo. Honestly, this game's not going to be for everyone, but for those of you who want a chill, unique experience and a bit of a palate cleanser, then it's definitely worth a shot. Next up, we have Age of Mythology Retold. And to be honest, this one was a fantastic game, scoring a solid 83 over on Metacritic. If you're a fan of real-time strategy games and love mythology, then this game is just made for you. The remaster has breathed new life into this classic that many of us spent countless hours on back in the day. They've enhanced the visuals overall, reworked some core mechanics, and brought up to modern day standards without losing that core gameplay that we all loved. The best part though is the mythological gods and creatures that you can call upon during battles. It's one of those unique elements that really sets this franchise apart from other RTS games. You're not just managing troops and resources though, you're summoning gods like Zeus to rain down lightning on your enemies. Honestly, I can't tell you how many hours have sunk into this game already since it dropped in September, so whether you're wanting to play through the campaign or just battle it out in skirmish mode, it honestly is an absolute blast. It really does bring back all the good memories from the original, and now it's just even more polished. It's definitely well worth playing, especially on your Game Pass subscription. Now, let's talk about Aura History Untold, which scored a relatively good 76, but at the moment it is only available on PC Game Pass. I did get my hands on this game early, but I'm still 50-50 on the overall experience. If you're into strategy games that let you rewrite history, this one's honestly going to be right up your alley. It's not just about building an empire, but it's about shaping culture, making diplomatic decisions, and navigating the complex web of history in your own way. The game definitely takes some cues from civilization, but brings with it its very own unique twists. What I really found interesting is how it blends historical accuracy with what-if scenarios, letting you change the course of history based on your decisions. Honestly though, fair warning to you, this game is a very slow burn. You'll need patience to see the fruits of your labour as you develop your nation over countless hours. I did enjoy the depth of this game, it's not as fast paced by any means, but then there's the charm. You get to immerse yourself in historical decision making, and watching your empire grow is incredibly satisfying. The only downside for me though was the poor tutorial 
management and honestly the menus weren't great either. Hopefully it does get better with time with a few updates and patches, but if you like games like Civilization, then it's well worth playing on Xbox Game Pass. For the Warhammer fans out there, we finally got our hands on Warhammer 40k's Space Marine 2 and it hit an impressive 82 and honestly many fans are calling this a game of the year contender. This game is just non-stop high octane action and honestly it's just such a huge improvement on the first game. The combat feels meatier, the graphics are a massive step up and you can feel the weight of every single bolt shell and chainsaw swing in the grasp of your hand. If you've ever wanted to step into the hulking boots of a space marine and wreak havoc on enemies in the Warhammer 40k universe then this game just delivers that in spades. The campaign might not blow you away with its story but honestly let's be real it's all about mowing down hordes of tyranids and so many more enemies you get to experience in the later game. Playing Space Marine 2 is honestly just a pure power fantasy and it's one of those games where you just feel like a total badass the entire time. If you love fast paced and brutal combat then this one's a no brainer. For me this is easily my game of the year so far and my jaw always dropped no matter the set pieces and just how incredible it was facing massive waves of enemies at every single turn. I still play this game now as the PvP option is also a solid mode and the operations mode is fantastic with your friends. With free updates coming and a lot of content included with those updates, I cannot recommend this game enough to all the Xbox gamers out there. Wild Bastards scored a 76 on Metacritic and trust me, the name gives you a pretty good idea of what you're in for. This game is just pure and utter chaos and I mean that in the best way possible. It's a roguelike shooter but it throws you into these sort of wild intense combat scenarios where just anything can happen. You've got so many crazy weapons, unpredictable enemies and a brutal difficulty curve which takes a while to master. Every single run in this game is different and every time you think you've mastered the game it throws something new at you to keep you on your toes. It is a bit rough around the edges but to be honest that's all part of the charm of this indie experience. I just love the unpredictability of Wild Bastards and it's one of those games that you can pick up for 20 minutes and honestly spend hours playing just for one more run as it always turns into five more runs. If you like fast paced unforgiving shooters with roguelike mechanics then this one you need to check out. To be honest here's the real treat for September the Plucky Squire finally launched and it launched to fairly good reviews. This game just oozes charm at every single step. You start off in a 2D storybook world, but the twist comes when you jump out the pages and into a 3D world and to be honest it's absolutely seamless. The combination of these two styles is so well done and it keeps the gameplay fresh and exciting the entire way through. The puzzles in this game are fairly clever, the platforming is relatively tight and to be honest the art style really stands out and is absolutely gorgeous. It's a shorter game and to be honest for the price tag some people might not find it worth it but every single moment is packed with creativity. I can't tell you how much fun I had with this one. It's whimsical, it's creative and it's one of those games that just makes you smile from start to finish. If you love platformers the Plucky Squire is an absolute gem. It may not be the longest experiences in the world compared to many others within the same genre and it sure does have a few pitfalls but overall the experience is well worth trying just for those unique features alone. Now the Dead Rising Deluxe Remastered finally scored an 83 on Metacritic and man this one's a blast from the past and it's well worth experiencing. If you love the original game you'll honestly just feel right at home here. They've spruced up the graphics, polished the controls and added some quality of life improvements to make the zombie slaying chaos just even better. The concept of turning a shopping mall into your personal zombie apocalypse playground is still just as fun as ever. I've been a fan of Dead Rising series for quite some while now and this remaster seems to have hit all the right notes. The open world, the endless weapon you can craft from random stuff you find lying around and the perfect mix of horror and over the top fun is simply on point. Unfortunately I actually didn't get my hands on this game as of yet but from what many of my close friends have been saying it's an absolute blast and an incredible love letter that needs to be experienced. If you love Dead Rising or want to dive into it for the very first time this seems to be the best way possible to experience this mammoth franchise. Beyond Galaxy Land sits comfortably with a 78 on Metacritic and it's a space exploration RPG with a lot of heart and many user reviews will certainly back up that info. You're traveling from planet to planet, solving puzzles, fighting enemies and uncovering the secrets of the galaxy. What I really love about this game is just how it blends exploration with some really interesting narrative choices. It's got that old school sci-fi adventure vibe with some incredibly cool modern twists. So far this is just a wonderful game. I've only played it for four hours but I'm really enjoying my experience with it. 
I've never heard of this game before and it did come out of nowhere for me. I actually just saw it whilst browsing the new releases. It blends turn-based combat in the JRPG style, but with some simple action-oriented things in combat to do better blocking etc and there's nothing button mashy. It has a lot of charm, good story so far, and platforming puzzles are incredibly well done. The combat is also pretty unique and does offer you a lot of options. Plus, you can catch creatures that you fight in this game using them as extra attacks during battle. I'm honestly incredibly glad that I stumbled upon this game, it is a gem in the indie world and I recommend that you give it a try. Next we've got Frostpunk 2, scoring a brilliant and mighty 86 on Metacritic. If you played the first Frostpunk, you know exactly what you're getting into. Harsh moral choices, city management and trying to survive in an apocalyptic frozen wasteland. But Frostpunk 2 doesn't just rest on the success of the first game, it really pushes pushes things forward in every single way. This time you're not just keeping your city from freezing to death, you're managing a complex political system where different factions demand different things. Some of your people might want to embrace new energy sources like oil, whilst others think it's too dangerous. So in that respect, you're constantly stuck between competing interests and those choices, well, they have serious consequences. I've always loved how Frostpunk makes you feel the weight of every single decision, and in Frostpunk 2, the stakes are even higher. Honestly, the sense of responsibility is so much more intense, and with that, I absolutely love it. You'll lose sleep over whether you made the right call, because it's not just about survival, it's all about your leadership. If you love city building games where every choice matters, this one's gonna hook you right in. Next up is Disney Epic Mickey Rebrushed, and for a remake experience, it's great to see so many positive user reviews and a strong 77 on Metacritic. For those of you who missed the original Epic Mickey back in the day, this remastered version is a great way to jump in. Honestly, the premise is simple yet very fun. You will play as Mickey Mouse and use paint and thinner to interact with a world full of forgotten Disney characters and locations. What's really cool though about this game is how you can choose to paint things back to life or raise them with thinner. Honestly, those choices do impact the world around you and it's honestly great to experience. It's a very clever way of adding depth that might otherwise seem like a simple platformer, and since this remaster updates the visuals and tightens up the controls, it feels a lot more modern whilst keeping that nostalgic charm. I've always been a fan of the Epic Mickey series because it's more than just a kid's game. Sure, it's Disney, but the darker tone and the idea of forgotten characters just make it feel completely unique. This remaster really does a great job of updating everything while still preserving that magical atmosphere that we fell in love with. If you're a fan of Disney, or if you're just in the mood for a charming platformer, with a very unique twist, then this game's a great way to unwind with. Well, Grapple Dogs Cosmic Canines is one that totally surprised me in September, and it honestly surprised a lot of reviewers out there with an impressive 88 on Metacritic, and this is actually the highest rated game of this month. If you're a platforming fan, this game is just pure gold. You will play as Pablo, an adorable dog with a grappling hook, and the whole game revolves around swinging, jumping, and exploring these beautifully designed colourful levels. What really makes this game really stand out though is just how tight the controls feel. The grappling mechanic is super satisfying, and every single jump or swing just feels incredibly smooth. There's a good variety in the levels too, with lots of hidden puzzles and hidden areas to discover, plus the soundtrack is just super catchy. It's one of those games that doesn't take itself too seriously, but offers just tons of fun. This game is just pure joy from start to finish, and I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I did. There's just something incredibly satisfying about the grappling mechanic in this game, and I highly recommend that you must try it out. If you're a fan of classic platformers, or even if you just want something a bit more cheerful and uplifting, then Grapple Dogs will definitely put a smile on your face. Last but certainly not least, this is probably the biggest release of September for many people out there, and that's EA Sports FC 25. And believe it or not, this is one of the highest scores for this licensed football franchise for quite some time, and it scored a relatively good 78 on Metacritic. Honestly, upon putting in 20 hours now since release, I can easily say it's one of the best FIFAs we've received in recent years. Ultimate Team again has been expanded in more ways, with the inclusion of the new Rush mode, and I have to say this new mode is certainly a massive highlight in this game. It's great to drop in for some sessions, and is a much better format than the previous Volta that literally nobody played. The improvements to career mode are certainly welcome as well, but I haven't had a chance to fully try everything out as I'm more of an Ultimate Team gamer. So if you like football and you want to dive into EAFC again, I think it's well worth picking up this newer entry in this franchise. Again, it does have the same sort of menu 
menus, but the gameplay is very solid and has all the hallmarks you would want in a game based on the world's game. So there you have it, the best rated Xbox games of September 2024. It's honestly been such an incredible month for gaming with something for absolutely everyone, whether you're into strategy, platformers, action, or even some space trucking. Let me know in the comments below which games you're excited about or which ones you've played and definitely recommend. Remember, if you do want to pick up any of these games or grab some Xbox store credit with 5% off, then head over to xboxnation.co.uk and use code XBOXNATION to get that discount. Remember to like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe for more Xbox news reviews and content every single day. Whilst here, why don't you check out my most recent review on Parcel Corpse. The game released on the Xbox store yesterday and is an interesting mix of retro titles like Crazy Taxi and Jet Set Radio.